I'm making this video for one of my coaching clients who has a dream that she wants to create, but she's not quite there yet. And there's a few things blocking her. Now I notice that the things that are blocking her block a lot of people. So in this video, I'm going to give you a few ways to work with the contents of feeling like you're being blocked or slowed or delayed uh, with your dream, or maybe you don't know enough. Maybe you're feeling imposter syndrome. Maybe you feel unworthy. Maybe you're like, why me? Maybe you're just wondering how, maybe, right? Maybe you're like, how is this going to work? So as you approach it, the first thing to recognize is that there's really two pathways. There is the emotional pathway, which is like, how do I feel about this? How do I feel about myself? Because what happens is a lot of people don't think that they're worthy. They think they're unworthy of creating the thing, of, of asking the girl out, of, of chasing the dream, of writing the book, of, you know, moving out of the country, like whatever the thing is, they feel like they're unworthy. And that's one aspect of it. And there's a certain way that we can work with that. But then the other aspect is that people are so focused on how to do it that they never actually fully commit to it. They want to see all the steps. They want to have that guarantee. They want to see exactly how it's going to play out. And for people who need all the steps, all the information, people who need that guarantee, what happens is they stay stuck in paralysis and they don't actually do anything. Like they, they just stay stuck. So what you really want to do is figure out, is this an emotional thing for me? Is this a worthiness thing for me? Or do I have an expectation of the steps required? Is this more of a logistical how-to thing, right? Because if you feel like you feel great about it, you're emotionally aligned with it, but you don't have the steps, you know, to execute, that's, that's one thing. Um, but if you just don't feel in alignment with it, if you feel unworthy of it, it doesn't matter what the steps are. So you have to truly figure out like where you are on that on that scale to figure out what the entry point is. So let's start with the person who's who's unworthy. So if you feel unworthy, if you're like, hey, I can't do this. If you have, you know, imposter syndrome, if you have a great deal of fear. I just want to validate you and let you know that all those things are normal. All of those things are normal. I walked on to Division One football team. I've I've written ten books. I quit my corporate job to become to become an entrepreneur. I've always went after the girl I wanted, right? And so I, I have a life of going after what I want. I have a life of putting myself out there. And one of the things that you have to allow yourself to do is you have to allow yourself to feel worthy of the opportunity. Now, someone someone could comment and say. Well, how do I allow myself to feel worthy if I currently feel unworthy? And I would just say, you have to investigate where you learned that from and you have to battle that thought. It's really, it really only comes from three places. It comes from your society, it comes from your family system, your upbringing, or it comes from your personal experience. So ultimately what you have to do is look into your life and see like, damn, is my society reinforcing this? Is it my family system? Like for example, if your parents grew up in poverty or they didn't grow up with a lot of money, you probably have a scarcity mindset around money yourself, right? And so it's like, holy crap, okay, I have to unlearn what my parents gave me, right? And don't fault your parents, don't don't blame them, like don't beat them up, they did the best that they could, that they could. but what happens is things get passed down. And what most likely happened is that got passed down to you. Now, if you were in relationships or friendships at one point, and those reinforce the idea that, hey, you can't do this. You're not smart enough. You don't look good enough. You're, you're whatever the, whatever the stem is, right? You fill in the blank. Then you have to really like disconnect yourself from that experience to understand that that's not the truth. Yes, there is an opportunity for all of us to get better and to improve. There is an opportunity for us to be accountable for and self-aware. There is an opportunity for us to take critique and to improve from that critique. Absolutely. Like none of us are above that. But if you had somebody in your ear consistently beating you down, telling you what you couldn't do, telling you how you wouldn't figure it out, telling you how you couldn't overcome, like you have to understand that that voice is a lie and that voice does not have to become your voice. Once you understand that that voice does not have to become your voice, you, you free yourself from it. Okay, um, another way to work with like the emotional side of things. So let's say 
this is an emotional side of things for you. Like, hey, I want to start this thing, but I just don't feel worthy. I feel like an imposter syndrome. At the, at the start of anything you do, you got to give yourself some grace here because you're at the start. You're a rookie. Like, think about a rookie in a, who's a professional athlete. They're still a professional athlete, but they're a rookie. So they're going to make a lot of mistakes. They're, they're not at the top of their game. Most of the time, rookies are not at the top of their game. They're still learning. They're still coming into their body. They're still learning how to optimize their game. And you have to look at your life like you're a rookie as a, as a professional athlete. Like you're in the game, you're in the trade, you're in the, in the market, but you're a rookie. So this is when you do make mistakes. This is when you're paying the most attention and when you take the most risk. You know, the people who are 10, 20, 30 years in often don't take the most risk because they know what works. They know what doesn't work. But where do you think that comes from? Well, that comes from the experiences that they had when they were often younger and they got to figure out, well, if I do that, that'll make me bankrupt. Well, if I do that, I'll lose my wife. Well, if I do that, I might lose my life. If I do that trigger, it'll make me $20,000 this month. If I do that month, it'll give me a million dollar contract, right? And so that only comes with experience. So if you're stuck with the imposter syndrome, you have to give yourself some compassion and some space to make mistakes and to understand that you will make mistakes, but you cannot equate the mistake making to like you are inadequate or you're not worthy or you're not good enough. Like that thought fallacy has to stop. You have to truly say, hey, Say you're an event planner, okay? You're not going to be, no matter how good you think you are, you won't be anywhere as good as a person who's put on 500 events. You're, you're 20 events in, right? And you're, you're comparing yourself and it's like people who've done 500 events have so much more knowledge and experience than you. And then let's go get the person who's done 10,000 events, right? So like, why would you compare yourself to them? You can't, it's unfair to your journey. You have to accept and acknowledge I'm 10, I'm 10 events in, I'm 20 events in, I'm getting the hang of this. You're, you're doing the best that you can right now with what you have. That's how you have compassion for yourself. That's how you get over the hump when you're dealing with, you know, imposter syndrome. Now, here's the last thing that I want to leave you with for today. When it comes to your dreams, you have to believe that it's possible. You know, when I was much younger and I wanted to become an author, I used to listen to a motivational speaker named Les Brown. And one of his main messages, and this was back in the 70s and 80s, you know, one of his main messages was that your dream is possible. Now, the reason why you have to believe in possibility is because it gives you hope and it gives you energy. And as a human, two of the, the biggest things that we need is hope and we need energy. Energy is what fuels your relationships. It what fuels your dreams. It's what's fueling you right now. You came to this because you thought the energy inside of this video would give you something you need and you could then take that energy and transfer it to your life. And I hope you got what you need. But you have to you have to understand that like you need energy. You need energy. And one of the best ways to get energy is just to believe. Think about what you believe in. If you believe you can't do it, you won't do it. If you believe you're unworthy, you are unworthy. But if you believe, hey, I'm a beginner and I'm going to figure this out. And if you believe, hey, in four years, I'll be a master of whatever trade it is. Maybe it takes longer than four years. Like I've been an author for 14 years. And I just want to tell you, although I've sold hundreds of thousands of books, how many people bought my first book? Not that many. Now, when you see me, I'm signed to Hay House. Hay House is the number one publisher of personal development work in the world. I'm solidified. I'm validated. It took me 14 years to get here. So how unfair of it. Think about if I would have quit after the first book. Think about if I would have quit after the first year. 14 years later, which would be now, I'll be saying to myself, man, I wish I didn't quit. I wish I didn't give up. So my friend, no matter where you are on your, your journey, I just want to encourage you to dig into how you think about it how you feel about it because your mindset what you believe your emotions about it is everything it's not so much about your your knowledge the knowledge will come with the experience the knowledge will come as you seek mentors as you seek the education as you seek experience as you're as you're committed to the journey as you dive into the journey so check your feelings check your emotions uh, yes acquire knowledge but here, here's the last thing i'm going to tell you 
what a lot of people do is they acquire knowledge. They seek knowledge, seek knowledge, seek knowledge. And they think that the path of seeking knowledge is going to trigger them into action. And it often does not. It often, what happens is it often paralyzes people. So start taking action on your dreams so you can integrate the knowledge that you're acquiring as well. Because in order for you to get what you want in life, in order for you to live the life that you deserve, you got to feel good about it. You have to believe in, believe in some hope. You got to believe in positivity. You got to put positivity into your dreams. You got to really pour into yourself and say, hey, I can do this. It's, it's, it's my time to learn how to do this. It doesn't have and it doesn't have to be easy. Throw away the idea that, hey, this is going to be easy. Most likely, if you found this video, the thing that you want to create or do is not going to be easy. It is going to require sacrifice. It is going to require dedication. It is going to require that you upgrade how you're thinking and how you're feeling about your experience. But you can do that because if you found me, I was in the same position that you were in at one point. And all I had to do was believe. That's the most important thing. I just had to believe, be humble and, and, and be thirsty for it and figure it out. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Comment below uh, if you got something out of it. I would love to know what you're working on or where this this concept where these words apply to your life. I would love to hear from you, to meet you. And until next time, live the life you deserve.